I have a lot to say. So today I want to talk about and share information regarding why I opted not to do the garrison therapy. So through my asking, seeking, knocking, definitely consulting God, listen to commentary by Charlotte Garrison, uh, videos on the protocol, how to administer the protocol, reading text from the book, The Garrison Therapy, I deduce that the Garrison Therapy is a no-nonsense protocol. You cannot take that lightly. You cannot pick and choose what parts you want to do. If you want to do it completely One day and not do it completely the, the, uh, the next day because you're risking your life and I will explain why. Hopefully I will have video in the description box from uh, Charlotte Garrison that gives more detail. But according to uh, the Garrison therapy, well let's say Max Garrison was I believe a uh, chemist and that therapy, although you're just eating fruits, vegetables and herbs, it is down to a science and it becomes pharmaceuticals and if you don't do it properly you are putting, you are risking your life. You're threatening your life. You're playing Russian roulette with your life. Your life. So, <laughs> taking a look at the juicing. I mentioned in another video that juicing, fruits and vegetables are detoxing. I've experienced it with getting rid of the intestinal parasites um, in my body. So, I may do seven cups of fruits and vegetables combined a day in a blender. And the Garrison therapy, you're doing, I don't know how many cups of fruit, 13 cups of fruits and vegetables, and you're getting the essence of those fruits and vegetables because you're juicing them. So this means that not me doing, you know, seven cups combined, but you are getting so much release of toxins in your body at one time throughout the day, all day long. So according to the Garrison Therapy, a person that is dealing with cancer or a terminal illness, um, AIDS or whatever, their, um, their liver is compromised. It's failing. It no longer works. It's not functioning. And the liver's function is to release toxins and manage the toxin, the toxin load in the body. So when you're juicing that way and you're not um, <clears throat> able to support your liver, you are, in essence, releasing those toxins back into the body to be available in the bloodstream and you're poisoning yourself. You have to do consume what they say to consume, the type of fruit or vegetable that they say to consume, the quantity, the amount. You have to do it the way that they do it because there is a reason. It's not just casual, which brings me to the organic coffee enemas. Now, let me just do a side note. For someone that is not fighting a disease, it doesn't matter because your liver is not compromised. You can eat it. You know, you can pick... Say, I want to do it on Monday, and I don't want to do it on Tuesday. I just want to do it this one day. Your liver is functioning, and it can handle it. But someone that is terminally ill, they cannot, and it will lead to their death. So looking at the organic coffee enemas. Now, I had a problem with doing them uh, three, to, three times a day because if you do them too early, you will starve yourself by because you're ridding yourself of the nutrients that you just put in your body. And you're not allowing your body to digest those nutrients. If you do them too late, you are releasing toxins into your bloodstream, which support disease and will cause you to die as well. So with the organic coffee enemas, I believe it is five or seven a day. If you're doing the, the uh, protocol, you must know the number and you have to do the amount that they say do because it's now a science. It's not casual. So in essence, you release the toxins out of the wherever they're stored in the body and the activated charcoal, check out my video on activated charcoal to see what that does, and the coffee enemas expel those from the body. So you take the responsibility off of the liver, you help the liver rest and heal, and then you're also effectively getting rid of the pollutants that are making you sick with this therapy, which brings me to the schedule. You, that's an, you may have to wake up at 7 a.m. according to the protocol and do that every single day. Not a healthy person, but a sick person because once you start that protocol, you are causing things to happen in your body throughout the day that, if done improperly, will promote sickness. So that's every single day of your life, waking up at a certain hour, doing things at certain points of the day, doing coffee enemas, preparing those, cleaning up after those, 
And I don't know about anybody else, but that is a lot of responsibility. And sometimes me dealing with sickness and healing, I'm not available at certain points of the day. I'm resting. I'm asleep. I, I can't be awake. So that is something that I considered prior to deciding to, to do that protocol and I opted that it's too regimented. It requires a, more discipline than I have at this time. And it's very serious and effective, though. Um, I believe that that's all that I wanted to say. Until next time, thanks for watching.